This episode contains mature language and situations. Listener discretion is advised. You wake to the sound of a train. The clack, clack, clack of wheels. In the distance, is that the sound of birds in a forest? No. It's angels in a choir. Or is it demons from hell? It doesn't matter. You have no memory of how you got here. All you know is that you're lost. And that now, you belong to the Grey Rooms. Season 4, Episode 8. Previously on The Grey Rooms. You're in the Grey Rooms. It's a hotel this time. An old one, and I am in charge. Your name is Samantha Winters. You can't leave. I know everything. And as for who I am, my actual name you wouldn't like, but... uh, He called me Bob. Samantha Winters, an art student swept up in the furor of a cult. She was touched by an eldritch power pretending to be a penitent god and died after a centuries-long rule as Earth's cruel and unforgiving deity. You blame a cat when it plays with a mouse? I could, so I didn't. I was a god. It's a bit of a bitch, Bob. Fascinating. So you don't regret it? Any of it? I only regret it's over. Happiest time of my life. Bob, please. Tell me those tapes aren't real. That she's not... me. I make it a point not to lie. How are she and I the same person? I don't... I don't feel that way at all. Why did Samantha leave the project? This isn't something we can discuss with you, Mr. Beckett. Well, it's interesting, Alma. You see, when Bob and I met, he mentioned there'd been an incident not that long ago. He said the repercussions were... unpleasant. Now... If Samantha was the guest just before me, that would mean the incident was during her time on the project. Wouldn't it?
The walls of the Iron Keep soared above me as I stared up into the face of a woman I hadn't seen in a very, very long time. She descended the dais like royalty. The last time I'd seen her, she'd worn the simple street clothes we'd given her in the old hotel. Now she wore a black gown inlaid with onyx-colored pearls. A jade choker was a dark green and gray line across her throat. A curved blade hung in a scabbard from a sling, its hilt inscribed with runes. Perhaps my time in the rooms, my time with the warden, had fractured my sanity. Or, I mused, this was some kind of manipulation. A mind-crafted illusion of the kind Alma was so skilled at creating. Samantha Winters reached ground level, and now I had to look down to meet her gaze. She was still a foot shorter than I was. She must have seen some of the thoughts cross my face, because her mouth screwed itself up into a crooked grin. You're not crazy, Bob. And I'm not an illusion or whatever. I'm here. How? How am I here? Or how am I not burning forever at the bottom of the hells? Both. (laughs) Your second question's got a long answer. One I don't think we have time for right now. As to why I'm here, let's just say I have some friends who want you safe. So, here I am. She seemed terribly pleased with herself then, in that moment. Now I am the one who has the secrets to keep. I don't understand. Same old Bob. And he said you changed. Who? Samantha, I'm... I'm pleased to see you. But the warden, he's right behind me. If he finds us here, I'm not sure I can protect you. Oh, don't worry about me. I can take care of myself these days. She hefted the blade at her side to emphasize her point. But you're right. We need to get moving. She turned, scanning the room, as if hoping to see someone there. As she did, I saw the changes I had overlooked in those first few moments of recognition. Well-heeled scars ran down her neck. Her hair, which had always been a golden hue, had faded to bone white. If this was not a trick... An illusion. The Samantha that stood before me had been through a very great deal since our last... encounter. Damn it. He should be here by now. (sighs) The surge of strength, of confidence that had gotten me past the Keep's Gate, fled my body. I staggered to a nearby bench and slumped down onto it. Are you all right? I'm... I'm fine. I have also been through a great deal since we last saw each other. Huh. Maybe you have changed. How did you, um... Lose my eye. Yeah. The warden. Right, right. Samantha. Save it. This is... Boy, this is even more awkward than I thought it'd be. Look, I know a lot more about the project, about you, than I ever did during my time in the rooms. I know you were just doing your job, doing what you thought was the right thing to do. If you had to do it over again... Would you still toss me in that pit? My instinct was to prevaricate, to hem and haw. But my exhaustion got the better of me, and my mouth opened of its own accord. No, I would not. And it's because of you. It's because of what you did to me that day on the battlements. What I did? 
You attempted to control me, as you had with Todd. It did at work. No. But somehow, when you touched my mind, it did something to me. You touched my very nature, Samantha. Demons are not supposed to be able to change, you know. I know. Well, I have changed. And I have no doubt it is why I am sitting here talking to you today. The Warden could sense it. The Architect could see it. Even the guest could tell I was different somehow. <sighs> Samantha, I don't know where you've been or why you're here, but if we escape the rooms, will you help me to understand this? I feel so... Lost? Yes. I will. I just need one thing from you. Name it. Oh! Why did you hit me? <laughs> because you threw me into hell, you asshole! <laughs> we had both changed. It was true. As she laughed at my confusion, which quickly turned to amusement, I felt some of the tension that had been holding my shoulders taut ease. For literal centuries, I had known what my future held, what my life would measure up to be. And now, I hadn't the faintest clue. But perhaps, with allies at my side. The sound of running footsteps took us both by surprise. Whoa, 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 Sam, it's me! Todd? Hey, you weird old bastard, where have you been? <laughs> I was helping Mr. Smalls here get to safety. <laughs> Plus, I had to stop off and get the ritual stuff, you know. Don't mind, old Todd. I felt my single remaining eye twitch in its socket. What in the hells was happening here? Wait. You two have been working together. Sort of. Like I said, I've got some friends. Yeah. Friends. We have mutual friends. Right. <laughs> it's good to see you in person, Miss Winners. How about a big old hug? <laughs> Not on your life, you perverted old goat. All right, all right. <laughs> you can't blame a bloke for trying. I can. Could we focus on our current situation? What ritual are you talking about? How long have you had these friends? Can they be trusted? Since back during the Admiral's times in the rooms. They promised to get me out in exchange for some, uh, little favours. What kind of favours? Oh, you know, some information here, a little bit of gossip there, letting a big old stake into the manor, you know, things like that. You? <laughs> oh, this is even better than I'd expected. Look at your face. As much as I'd love to stand around and watch Bob try to make facial expressions. Thank you. The three of us can catch up and answer your questions after we've escaped the warden, and the Grey Rooms, and certain dismemberment. Yes. Wait. Is there any way that we could go back for Raymond? What? Raymond? He was the first guest, before either of you were in the rooms. The complex just beyond the keep. He's trapped there. Perhaps we could leave him instructions on where to go. Some place to meet us. He helped me, before Todd could lead me to safety. I don't know why, but I would not have survived without his help. I'm sure of it. Uh, Bob, Raymond's gone. What do you mean, gone? Yeah, mate, I, I heard the architect talking about it. They didn't know you'd kept him around. Uh, they were pretty pissed about it. Before I sent you down there, well, the warden went in and, well, cleared him out. Uh, Raymond was gone before you got dropped in there. I... I don't... Then what did I see? Who was that? 
the woman who had once ruled a planet through fear and pain sheathed her blade and took my hand. I started, uncomfortable, but she gripped it all the harder. Bob, I've been through a lot since my time in the rooms. Enough to know not everything is explainable or understandable. Sometimes you just have to take the win when the universe gives you another shot. You know? I'm sorry, Bob. I... I can mull this over later. In the meantime, the rooms are inescapable. Magical constructs designed specifically to stop the kind of escape attempt you're describing. What is this ritual you mentioned? How in the Nine Hells do you propose we free ourselves? Bob, oh boy, <laughs> you are gonna love this. I do not, in fact, love this. <laughs> now passing the fifth floor, all ladies, frilly undergarments, and perfumes. I thought the hotel had been destroyed after... You threw me in the pit? Uh, yes. Something you gotta get used to, old man. Management, the architect, and the like, they lie about everything, it turns out. She had us break down the lobby in the hall, sure, but, but she picks and chooses the bits of the project that she likes and scribbles them away for a rainy day. How did you connect this to the keep? Do you have, uh, what did you call Samantha's gift? The whammy. Oh, oh no, no, no. Miss Winters here is the heavy here. I'm just real good at taking notes, you know, gathering materials, following instructions, stuff like that. The... Whammy? What would you call it then? I mean, good enough, I guess. Where are we going? Only part of the hotel that's left, Bobo boy. The restaurant. It's one of her favourite places. She used to come up here when Ms. Winters was in the hotel to chat with the warden or make plans. And we had such a lovely meal here, too. I know you're joking, but I still think about that apple pie sometimes. you go give me the recipe someday. Can we focus, please? This is the place. All right. I could make a rabbit disappear out of a hat. Our friend said it should be as easy as putting together a batch of chili. I'll just get this set up and working. You two just, uh... Shit. Keep them busy. Work quickly, please. Really quickly. Still glad you came to get me. Ask me after we get out of here. I turned from Samantha, a grim smile on my face. Just in time to see the warden leap onto the restaurant balcony. He wore his badge of office, the cloak of keys made by the founder in the early days of the project. It swirled about him as he drew himself up to his full height. The fury etched on his face was terrible to behold. No bloating, no threats. Not this time. He rushed towards us, and I moved to stop him. All I could do was hope I could hold him. Hope that I could buy some time for Todd to do whatever it was he was doing. 
I dug deep and summoned forth my last reserve of strength. I tapped into the demon within and felt my human hands snap and gnarl as they grew into clawed talons. blade had left a jagged wound in my arm. It pumped dark blood onto the ground as I staggered back from my opponent. For my part, I'd managed to give as good as I'd gotten, but the warden was far sturdier than I was, had been marshalling his strength. Samantha stepped forward, her own blade held out before her. <laughs> now where did you come from, my dear? <laughs> oh, you know, I missed you guys. Laugh a minute around here. Tsk, tsk, tsk. Another loose end, Bob. Another failure. Allow me to take care of that for you. Not this time, asshole. <laughs> Samantha's strength fell down upon the rooftop like a suffocating mist. I felt myself slow, like I was caught in a mire. Todd's eyes were huge as he tried to continue his work, his fingers moving in pantomime motion among the ritual implements. The warden hung arrested in midair, his cloak billowed behind him his blades arcing for Samantha's face. Effortlessly, she stepped to the side, unaffected by the power she had brought to bear. She strode forward, moving to stand at the warden's side. You know, I was so afraid of you. When you had me trapped here. When I was powerless. The warden's eyes bulged with hatred. I could see him trying to form words but to no avail. Well, I'm not powerless anymore. What was that you said? That first day at the hotel? Hmm. Oh yeah. Say goodbye, Warden. Samantha Winters reached out and casually brushed a hand against the warden's chest. The force of the impact blew the warden clear off the building. One moment he was there, one moment he was not. Her strength spent. Samantha sagged, and I rushed forward. My wound continued to spatter blood on the ground as I caught her, and we swayed there unsteadily. Ah, oh, shit. Wasn't... wasn't sure that would actually work. Most impressive, Miss Winters. Todd! Oh no! Oh no! Just about... <laughs> Todd's ritual working coalesced into a tear in space. A hole in the sky above the balcony. A hungry wound that tugged at my feet and set my blood spatters soaring through the air to disappear into the infinite. This is it! Our way out of the ruins! Where does it go? Away from here, old boy! Come on! It's a brand new day, Bob! <laughs> they already fired you. What's the worst that could happen? With those words, the old caretaker and former terrorist leapt at the tear and was gone. 
You're coming, right? I'll be right behind you. <laughs> You'd better be. You know how much of Todd I've had to put up with to make this thing come together? She stepped to the edge of the tear, and Samantha Winters exited the Grey Rooms for the second time. I turned to look out across the dismal grey sky of the full city beyond the balcony. It had been an embellishment on the architect's part for one of the hotel's few amenities. An artistic choice, not meant to create joy or wonder, but to manipulate and control, to cow the mortal mind with fear and submission. Demons are not supposed to be able to change. But I looked at that sky and felt, for the first time, a likeness inside of me. Hope for a future of my own creation. A loosening of the chain bound around my very soul. My last thoughts as I stepped through the portal and left the Grey Rooms forever were of the Founder. A man I felt sure I would never see again. But then again, for the first time in eons, I had no idea what would come next. didn't need to say that to the receptionist. Well, what's the point? If the fates or the Norns or whatever they're calling themselves, Celia. if they say that our day is going to be horrible, why bother Celia. with have a good day, have a nice life, enjoy your pointless time on this pointless planet because we've decided that your life Celia! Is it's okay. I know what you mean. It's just... Let's, let's just unpack, okay? It's going to be a long week. I, yeah, sorry, just <laughs> stressful time, you know? Not every day you're set to die. We've still got time. It does seem weird to you, right? They just pop up, declare that they know everyone's fate, and we all agree. It all seems very convenient. There's plenty of good evidence for it. I'm sure they've done studies or something. Plus, if they can see where the tracks of our lives lead, I mean, why not enjoy the ride? You're not even a little curious? No, not really. Um, let's just drop it. Okay? There's a pool on the third floor. We can relax a bit before dinner. Great. And if I drown there, it just proves my point. Joking, Mike. Jesus. Let me find my swimsuit, okay?
Wow. First vacation and now dinner. You know, I didn't know you well enough. I think this was your way of proposing. <laughs> oh, hardy har. Look, my girlfriend said she didn't want to be part of my death trip. She... She didn't want to come with. No. That's kind of why I asked you along. No offense, Mike, but we're not that close. Definitely not bring you across the country to see if I'll die close. I guess I just figured you didn't want her to have to see a, you know. Oh, thank God. All right, we've got pasta carbonara for the lady and herbed fish for the gentleman. Enjoy your meal. Thank you. Ooh, very healthy. Honestly, why do you even bother? What? Obviously, you don't need to tell me how you're going to die or anything, but what's the point? I mean, if you're going to die of heart disease or something, isn't that going to happen anyways? If not, why bother torturing yourself with cod and steamed vegetables? Well... Maybe I like cod and steamed vegetables. It feels nice to think you're doing something right, that you're helping things line up. I do not want to help anything line up in their sick little game. Can we please not do this in dinner? It's one thing to do this in the hotel room, but we're in public. Yeah, I, yeah, sorry. I still can't believe you came. Well, you did offer a free ticket. (laughs) Decent bribe, then. So, what are we thinking for tomorrow? Heard there was a museum nearby. I could do a museum. What kind? Uh, Natural history? Art? Uh, I'd have to check. I haven't been to a museum since I was, like, ten. And all I remember is being sad. Dinosaurs weren't alive anymore. Well... Maybe I can show you just how much fun museums can be. <laughs> uh. Wow. Didn't realize we were that close. <laughs> I, I, I know. I, 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 Heck, I know. I... Uh, sorry. Sorry. Hello, Celia Carson speaking. Really? Well, I'll be back in just under a week, so... Oh, I see. I'm afraid I can't do that. I understand. But the tickets are non-refundable. I don't think that will be necessary. I'm sorry, but I can't accept. Thank you. Uh Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Telemarketer? No. HR. They say I got a promotion. One that I would have to accept in person. Cool. Uh, Oh, oh, but the the They offered to pay for the trip back. Oh, so you said no because... Because I'm supposed to die back there. And because I'm pretty sure I filed all the right do not disturb, trying not to die paperwork beforehand. Anyways, if we're listening to the fates, I'd die before I could even get a tour of the office. I guess. For now, let's have dinner. When we get back to the room, I can check with HR. We can watch TV, and I can look up what there is to do in town. All right? All right. Yeah, sure. All three fates, Clothos, 
Lachesis, and Atropos are in attendance to present the newborn prince with his book of fate. A royal reader will go over the book after the ceremony in order to plan for his future. The identity of the reader is not being made public as the prince's mother says she does not want publicity surrounding her son's fate. Find that museum? Huh? Uh, the museum. You said something about it at dinner. Oh, sorry. I was reading. Can you shut that off? That interesting, huh? Never mind. Museum, right? Uh, yeah. Are you sure you're okay? It's fine. Articles. I'm reading about people who've escaped their fates. <laughs> those are all tabloids. Not all of them. All those people died when their book says. They're only claiming that it changed to get attention. If anyone had ever found any case where what happened actually contradicted a person's fate book, it would be major news. I know you think I'm insane. I don't think you're insane. But it's a lot. You said it yourself. It's nice to feel in control, isn't it? Like you're doing something. All right, but you, you should probably stop anyway. I, I'm afraid you'll get a virus on your laptop. I think I'll just go to bed. Good night. Good night. See you in the morning. What a day, huh? Where to next? Hmm? Oh, yeah. Yeah, really interesting. Loved the uh, mythology displays. Uh, we could stop for lunch. There's a bunch of neat restaurants around here. Listen, Mike, I'm really not feeling... Come on, not again. Hello? Are you sure? Cassandra Carson. Is she requesting me? What hospital did you say? Uh-huh. Right. No, I think that's all I need to know. Goodbye. What was that? Apparently, my mother is in the hospital. Stage four stomach cancer, they said. Just like the fates promised. Having surgery tomorrow. That's horrible. I, I'm so sorry. Uh-uh. Let me finish. She's in the hospital of St. Francis. Our old rabbi went there after a stroke and he was in the waiting room for hours before they treated him. Mom still blames them for the fact that he can't speak. She wouldn't go there to get her nails clipped, much less check herself in for an emergency. I don't know who the hell is calling me, but they have never met my mother. Well, are you going back? No. Nope. Celia, this is your mother we're talking about. She could be dying. Would it help if I said she wasn't set to die for another four years? I suppose, but if she's really sick, shouldn't you be there for her? And return home? Go back to the place I'm supposed to die, oh, tomorrow? I know it sounds cruel, but I want to hear it from her before I do anything. She knows how important this is to me. If everything goes well, I'll be back by the end of the week. Let's, let's just go back to the hotel. I need to lie down.
You know, if you wanted to walk, we could have done that outside. I'm sorry, but according to the little prophecy book three dead goddesses gave me, I've got less than a day on Earth. I'm a bit antsy. If it's your last day, don't you want to do something other than wear a hole in the floor? What? Go skydiving? Splat on the ground and prove them right? Or maybe ride a roller coaster and fly off at the first sharp turn? Or hell, why not just walk into the street and get hit by a car to get the whole thing over with? Jesus Christ, for all I know, someone's going to break through that window and stab me to death. For people who apparently know everything, the fates could have given a couple more details than unnatural death, Morgan Creek, August 10th, age 34. Whoa, 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 whoa. didn't ask. Oh, cut it out. You could piece it together. You just want to be upset because if no one talks about it, no one can call their bluff. You know what, Celia? You're insane. You're absolutely insane. I I tolerated all of this conspiracy bullshit because I thought it made you happy. But look at you. You're a mess. So then why did you come? Because somebody needed to bring back your body. Oh, come on. Uh, uh, hello, Celia Carson. Someone's on the phone from Morgan Creek. They're asking for you. It sounds urgent. Oh, no. No, they're not. Just go. Now. I'm sorry, ma'am, but they said... Go! Happy? I didn't tell anyone where I would be staying, so... No, I'm not. Can't be that hard to figure it out. Yeah, just figure out the one hotel I'm at from the, what, dozens? Hundreds in the city. (sighs) Why won't you believe me? Because you won't accept reality. I know you got a bad deal, but let's face it. Fate is fate. Our lot is our lot. No one can change it. No one has. No one will. I'm I'm going for a walk. I, I can't deal with this right now. Stupid. Atropos did not appear for her scheduled meeting with the Queen of England this afternoon. Her sisters declined to explain her whereabouts, instead saying that she is on a divine mission. Good for her. What this mission may be has become an object of speculation for online sleuths the world over. I turned you off. I turned you off. Fine, fine. Mike? Hello? Hi, Celia. Um, would you mind meeting me downstairs? Third floor, back hallway. What, by the pool? Isn't that empty? Please, Celia. This is important. All right. What's going on? Please. Shit. Mike? Hello? Over here. Mike? Oh, thank Who are you? I believe your people call me Atropos. No. 
Yes, I'm afraid so. I heard about your little quest to avoid my writings. I have to say, Celia, I am impressed. Do you know what time it is? What are you doing? Just after eight. The last plane to Morgan Creek left not half an hour ago. I considered asking my sisters to weave the words it would take to keep that plane on the ground until you boarded, but... I'm not one to beg. I'm afraid you'll remain here. Wait, so I won? Well, then why do you have Mike? What do you want from me? I'll go so far as to say that you were right. At least to some extent. Humans are... slippery. Gods and spirits can be tugged and wound into glimmering tapestries of fate, but humans like to change things. It's hard to weave with living thread. It pulls away from your knots, forges its own paths through the warp you have so carefully drawn. Sometimes even it dodges the final embrace of your scissors. Can, can, I, can I go? Just a moment, dear. Do you know what your friend's fate says at the end? Of course not. Please, let him go. At the moment, it reads, Natural cause of Seattle, Washington, December 29th, age 86. A nice long life for a nice obedient man, but I'm afraid things must change. My sisters and I changed. We were so rigid with our rules once. The more people slipped out of our grasp, the more we tried to weave them back into the pattern we saw. One stray thread could pull the whole thing apart. We hid for many years, trying to obscure our errors. We know better now. If you're clever about how you hide the threads, no one can tell that a tapestry is anything but a continuous hole. Please. So, if anyone were to look at his book now... The words will have changed. Accident, Los Angeles, California, August 10th, age 36. Pity, really, I always hated drowning deaths. What? what? Yours won't require such drastic changes. Unnatural death, August 10th, age 34, correct? But no longer at home. A tourist murdered at apparent random. A tragedy, but the world will soon heal. It always does. Goodbye, Celia. Without Turn, written by Cormac Baldwin, with performances by Lindsay Kelly as Celia, Gabe Templin as Mike, Krista Lewis as Atropos, Graham Rowett as The Waiter, Sarah Ray Werner as The News Anchor, and Mark Witten as The Hotel Staff. Outside Again was written by Michael Zenke, featuring performances by Graham Rowett as Bob, Alastair Mackey as Todd, Jason Wilson as The Warden, and Sarah Ruth Thomas as Samantha Winters. Musical composition is by J.M. Scher. Episode artwork, web development, and creative direction by Cassie Pertit. Social media and Patreon management is by Brooks Pigley. Videography is by Hale Scherf. Community management is by Tori Miller. And audio engineering and sound design is by me, Jason Wilson. Well, roomies, it's that time again. Another episode down as we flip through the pages of Season 4. Now, a couple of announcements. Next week, we'll be doing another extended Behind the Door week where Brooks will dig into all of the gooey details, not only with the author of today's episode, but also going behind the scenes 
with our latest set of Bob episodes. After that starts our two weeks of free Patreon, where we'll have some extra content dropping into your regular feeds, including Dismal Dirges, a two-part Bane miniseries, as well as the first bonus episode from Season 4. Not to mention some other fun bits that we'll sprinkle along the way on our social channels. These are all benefits our patrons receive over on patreon.com forward slash the gray rooms. All of the support we receive for building this show comes from listeners like you. And we can't do it without you. You guys really help us build out this crazy nightmare of mine. And it's been a pleasure terrifying you. But speaking of our patrons, we would like to take the time to thank our patrons once again. And to any of those who have taken time to leave us a five-star rating and a review. Because those reviews keep us at the top of the charts and makes it easier for more twisted souls to find the show. Patrons like Ellen Houghton, Eric Pritchard, Eric Phones, Jackalbot Snows, Lynn Browning, Matthew Smith Deal, Patrick Stewart, Ronan Kumori, Sean Geary, Amanda Siegfried, Annalise Belladonna, Arthur Unk, Doozer Pendon, Dustin Armstrong, Evan Jaffe, Gage Mecro, GT, Jason Porras, Joanna Walker, Katie Tatry, Kay Davis, Kelly Bear, Mesa, Meg Pexson, Michael Kreps, Michael Velez, My Ex Does Porn, Mick Paul Jims, Nightmare Rabbit, Puss Bajean 69, Ramius, Rhiannon, Richard Wright, Riley Warren, Ryan McGann, Sandy King Carpenter, Scott Johnson, Talisha Gallman, That Guy 7747, The Good Prof, Teresa Tabor, TJ Hodder, The Undisputed Baron of Disneyland, Wolf Delta Pi, Zektros Verascool, Shaktolas, I still love saying that one. Aaron Anthony, Adam Poston, Amy Nikolai, Ora Hart, Colton Quickle, Eli Dowell, Emily Cullen, Harrison Lively, Julian Rether, Klaus H., Laura Lupinetti, Mary Jane Dillabu, Pake Carey, Ryzan the Mad, Spirit Live, Sal Curtis, and C.M. Peters. You can find The Grey Rooms on Spotify, iTunes, or your favorite podcatcher. But we are also now available on iHeartRadio's Spreaker app. Just download the iHeart Spreaker app or open the browser and search The Grey Rooms. And we here at The Grey Rooms love our fans. And we want to give back to you in the best way that we know how. We have a lot of fun things to show you. And we hope that you like them. And you can find out more by joining us on social media. You can find us on Instagram, YouTube, Reddit, Twitter, and Facebook. And we took your advice and extended an olive branch to all of the tortured souls who have passed through the rooms. Our emotional support group is always looking to help you with all of your your needs. And don't forget about our merch store. It's full of epic designs and logos for you to sport, showing the world that you are a survivor of these very rooms. All of this can be found in the show notes or on our website at thegrayrooms.com. And last but not least, the Grey Rooms Discord. Which, if you join a Patreon, we now offer specialized Discord roles. Before, we would have a patron role. You would come in and you would get assigned the role and have access to all the unique and hidden away channels that our patrons get to enjoy. Which includes movie nights, game nights, and, well, just really personal interactions with a lot of the staff here at the Grey Room. So, if that sounds fun... Pop on over there and enjoy the new way it runs. When you sign up for a tier, on your sign up, there is a button for the Discord. When you click on that button, you will be given Discord access at your tier level. Depending on your tier, many to all of the Grey Room's doors will be open. And with that comes, like I said, game night, movie night, and interactions with a lot of those behind the scenes here at the Grey Room's, including myself. There's tons to do over there. Lots of great people to meet, Lots of great things to be involved in and talk about. And not to mention, you know, we just really enjoy spending time with y'all. So, if you're looking for a community, probably the best in all of the internet. And all of horror. And all of the spinning mind boggle that is the globe. 
then you need to head over to our Discord. So check it out today and join us. You're missing out otherwise. Well, this is episode eight. We have a lot more left to do before we reach the end of the season. So we have a ton of work still ahead. So I need to go ahead and jump back into production and get ready to roll out episode nine. So till next time, thank you for all of your support. Stay gray and we'll see you next week. This has been a Gray Rooms production. Copyright 2020.